Hi everybody and welcome to Vodcast 16 for Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School. I'm Mr. Galladay and today we're going to be talking about cell membranes and diffusion uh, and those are basically two things that are important to understand to understand how stuff moves in and out of cells and moves around inside of cells. Okay, this is a good point to update your table of contents, uh, update your uh, organization, update your page numbers and titles and so forth. And the first thing uh, we're going to start off with looking at is, whoops, let me get this thing. Okay, there we go. Cell membranes and diffusion, how stuff moves around in cells. Here we go. This time for real. Okay, here's our picture of our cell. And the part that we're going to be zooming in on, of course, is the membrane, this orange thing right here. Uh, so <clears throat> here's what that looks like. And of course, uh, most of you, I hope, remember that this is something that's made up of what we call a phospholipid bilayer. And if you look at this diagram, you see all these little orange doodads, uh, and they indeed are forming sort of a double layer. Uh, and what we're going to uh, be learning about now is how that uh, how that works, what the heck a phospholipid is, and why does it make this crazy bilayer thing, okay? Okay, so first thing is what the heck is a phospholipid? Well, a phospholipid, uh, as you might uh, guess from the, the name, it has a lipid part, which of course is a fat or an oil. Oils, as we know, do not mix with water. They are what we call hydrophobic. Uh, just like the olive oil in your salad dressing does not mix with the vinegar and the water. Um, the, uh, the, the lipid tail of the phospholipid does not mix with water. The phosphate part, on the other hand, though, very much does mix with water. Okay, Phosphate is a polar molecule just as water is, and it is very happy. It will uh, interact with water. It's very happy to uh, interact with water. And since we like to have all of our molecules happy, uh, when this stuff, when a bunch of these molecules get together, uh, the hydrophobic parts all sort of want to exclude water molecules, so they're going to interact with each other. Uh, and the, the uh, hydrophilic part, the um, water-loving part, the uh, phosphate, of course, those are going to basically orient themselves so they are either outside or inside of the cell. So when they uh, get together, they form this type of a structure. Now this is a little diagram that I think you should sketch into your notes that explains what a phospholipid bilayer looks like. Uh, it's formed of a, a just zillions and zillions of these little uh, molecules, these phospholipids. Okay, These are the phosphate parts. Uh, and they are going to interact with each other and with water molecules. The, this part right here, which are the lipids, those are going to exclude water molecules and they're going to interact with each other, uh, but not with the water. So when we get uh, a whole bunch of these things together, uh, they form a, uh, a layer like this. And this, of course, would then translate to the uh, the, the cell membrane. Okay, now as you can see, there's lots of other stuff in the cell membrane too. There are all of these various proteins and so forth. Uh, and so we say that this is what we call a mosaic of proteins, lip lipids, and carbohydrates that all go together to make up uh, this thing that we call the cell membrane. Okay, here's another view. Uh, and this is the, the same diagram that we saw at the at the beginning. Um, so again, here are our phospholipids, right? These little orange things. So, so here's our, our main layer of phospholipids stretching off as far as the eye can see uh, uh, and basically continuing on to form a sphere. And then some of these proteins are what we call transport proteins. You can think of them as sort of like a tube or a little channel uh, that things can move through there. Okay, uh, That is how uh, glucose moves into the cell. That's how all kinds of things move in and out of cells by going through these transport proteins. Okay, uh, we'll be having a lot more to say about those later on. Okay, so this is the outer surface of the cell. This is the cytoplasm. So this down here, this is the inner part of the cell. There's water on both sides. 
uh, most cells, well, all, just about all cells live in uh, some sort of an aquatic environment. There's cytoplasm, which is basically water on the inside, and there's some sort of liquid on the outside. Um, and so water can move back and forth across this thing, but other things can't. Okay, so transport proteins are channels that allow some things to move across, other things not. Okay, so um, now if we sort of zoom back out, uh, this is the area that we were looking at. Okay, so you can imagine this, this uh, huge layer of, of molecules, well, not really huge from our perspective, but from the molecular standpoint, a uh, very huge layer of these things that are um, forming the, 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 the sort of hollow sphere that we uh, know as the cell. Okay, some terminology. Um, <clears throat> first of all, something, anytime we talk about a solvent, a solvent is a liquid. Now, the nice thing about biology is that the solvent that we were, the one solvent that we were, are almost always talking about is water. Um, in chemistry, you will talk about lots of other solvents other than water. But in biology, the main solvent that we're concerned with is almost always water. Things are almost always water soluble. Okay, so solvent is the liquid. And then we have something which is dissolved in that uh, liquid, and we call that a solute. Okay, uh, this could be salt, this could be a sugar, this could be a gas, such as oxygen or carbon dioxide, could be starch, could be proteins, could be amino acids, all kinds of things are dissolved in uh, the water and they're moving around in the water. Okay, so we, we now know what a solute is and we know what solvent is, so we can move on and talk about a couple other key terms. Okay, diffusion is the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Now this idea applies to both the solvent and the solute. Okay, so anything, you can think of it as ratios. Anything where there is a different ratio of one uh, molecule to another, things are gonna move from the, uh, the, the higher ratio to the lower ratio. Okay, so if we have a place where there's mostly water and another place where there's mostly dye or mostly some other molecule, the water is going to move to the place where there's less water and the other stuff, the, the salt or the dye, is going to move to the places where there's less dye by the process of diffusion. Okay, another thing that we've been uh, talking about is this idea of a semi-permeable membrane. Okay. Uh, a window screen is an example of a semi-permeable membrane, allows air to move across, but big bugs can't get through, hopefully. Okay, so a, a barrier that allows some things to get across, but not others, we say is semi-permeable. Next term is osmosis. Osmosis is a uh, specific type of diffusion. Anytime water moves across the semi-permeable membrane, we call that osmosis. That is a very specific type of diffusion. Uh, it's basically diffusion that's happening, but in osmosis, there is always a semi-permeable membrane involved. Okay, and the last term to understand is this idea of tonicity. Now, in tonicity, we're talking about a relative amount of solute or a relative ratio of sol solute between two different, con two different um, uh, solutions. Okay, so we might have, for example, a glass of iced tea which is very strong and a glass of iced tea which is very weak. Uh, and if we compare those, then we would say the tonicity of those two, uh, those two iced teas is different because the amount of tea dissolved in the water is, is different, right? The tea being the solute and the water, of course, being the solvent. Okay, so some terminology to understand what we mean by tonicity. Uh, these are terms that uh, are kind of like above and below, right? If I say something uh, is above, well, it doesn't mean anything unless you know uh, that it's above what or below what. Um, the word hypotonic refers to uh, an, a, a concentration of a particular substance. 
Okay, so if it has a very low concentration of solute relative to another solution, then we would say that it is hypotonic. Okay, so a weak glass of iced tea compared to a normal glass of iced tea would be hypotonic. Okay, meaning it is has a low concentration of the stuff dissolved in the water. Okay, way to remember this is hypo means below. If you think of a hypodermic needle, uh, that is something that injects medicine below your skin. Dermic uh, or dermis refers to your skin, uh, and the hypodermic needle injects medicine below your skin. Another example that you might be familiar with is hypothermia. Whenever your body temperature falls below, uh, far below its normal, uh, we say that you are hypothermic, right? You're your body temperature is below where it should be. Okay, uh, there is also something called hypertonic. Okay, so if you had a very, very, very concentrated, very strong glass of iced tea that uh, you know just hurts your mouth to drink it, uh, compared to normal, we would say that that is a hypertonic solution. Hypertonic uh, means it has a higher concentration of solute relative to some other solution. So relative to a normal glass of iced tea, we would say that that very strong tea is hypertonic. Okay, uh, hyper, uh, the, the, that prefix is most familiar to us if you think, if you know someone who is hyperactive, and most of us do, uh, hy that hyper prefix means above. So someone whose level of activity is above normal, we would say that they are hyperactive. Okay, uh, so we have hypo meaning below, hyper meaning above, and the third possibility is that they, we have something that is isotonic, meaning it is the same concentration. Okay, so two glasses of iced tea that are the same concentration, uh, that are the same whether they're strong or weak or normal, uh, if they're the same as each other, we would say that they are isotonic to each other. They're at this, they're the same level of uh, solute concentration. Okay, an isosceles triangle is an example of a use of that iso prefix. Okay, um, let's look at an example here. If we start off with some water molecules, and this is a diagram that you should draw. Uh, the blue dots, of course, represent our water molecules. Now we add some solute, so these red. Uh, dots would rep represent some salt molecules, let's say. Uh, then we can say, we can ask this question. Well, first of all, which way will the solute diffuse? Well, the solute will move from its area of high concentration, which is over here, to its area of lower concentration, which is over at the right. Okay, so now which side is hypotonic? Well, hypo means below, so the area that has the lower concentration of solute would be the right side. Okay, the area that is hypertonic is the area that has the higher concentration or uh, the above uh, level of, of uh, solute concentration. So that, of course, would be the left side where our, our solute concentration is high. Okay. Now the next thing to think about is which way will the water diffuse? Well, the water ratio, right, or the water concentration is higher on the right than it is on the left. So the water will be diffusing to the left, the solute will be diffusing to the right, and then over time we will come to have a mixture which is uh, isotonic throughout, right, which will have uh, the same amount of uh, um, solute concentrated throughout the whole solution. Okay, this is where I'm going to hold it up. This has been vodcast number 16 uh, for Desert Ridge High School in Honors Biology. I'm Mr. Galladay, and I hope you have a great day.